Some of the building does not need to come down before we open the street. Part of downtown Carterville remains off limits tonight as officials assess the damage from last night's big fire and try to determine a cause. Good evening. State investigators were on the scene this afternoon at the remains of the Corbell Electronics Building in downtown Carterville, but they have yet to pinpoint what sparked the massive fire that destroyed that and another building. We have team coverage tonight. News 3's Matthew Searcy and Fauna Haile Selassie have been on the story all day. Leading our coverage, News 3's Emily Finnegan. She joins us live from the scene in downtown Carterville tonight with the latest Emily. Eden, I'm here on South Division Street in Carterville. As you mentioned, the road is still blocked off. Earlier today, firefighters were finally able to put out that massive fire that destroyed the Corbell Electronics Building located just behind me, and some of the rubble is still smoldering this evening. It took crews about 18 hours to get the flames under control, and it may take investigators much longer to determine what caused this fire. News 3's Matthew Searcy has been on this story from the very beginning. He spoke with fire officials today, and he joins me now with more on the story tonight. Matt. Emily, I actually had a chance to speak with Carterville Fire Chief Bruce Talley this afternoon, and he says that the damage suffered here at the Corbell Electronics Building is so severe that fire investigators have been unable to complete a full investigation, and the vulnerability of the building is forcing fire officials to close down Division Street until that problem is solved. And we may not open the street for a little while. At least two blocks of downtown Division Street remain closed off in Carterville from Grand Avenue to Illinois, a decision by Fire Chief Bruce Talley. Well, we've got some uh, areas that are uh, perhaps a collapse area and we don't want to put people in, in jeopardy. And he says the remains of the Corbell Electronics Building not only pose a threat to pedestrians and drivers, but have impeded investigators from determining the cause of the fire, and those remains will need to come down. Well, the closer we can get, the closer we get a look at and get opinions of the professional people, it'll also help as well. But uh, some of the building does not need to come down before we open the street. Crews from throughout the region worked to fight the flames overnight as the fire spread from the Corbell building to a vacant business and apartments next door. They were able to prevent it from getting to other nearby businesses. I just hoping and praying our building wouldn't burn and uh, it didn't. It just got smoke and water damage. Power lines were also damaged, causing problems for the neighborhood. The power lines did all burn down in that area, and even the uh, cable, uh, the telephone cable, suffered significance. And still, yet yeah, we have customers out of service to the north of the town. Fire crews also had problems getting enough water early in the night, but that was restored just after three this morning. Tally says the fire was one of the biggest and most challenging he has dealt with in his time as chief. Looking forward to maybe better days for sure. Fire investigators say that the debris will need to be cleared before a full investigation can be completed. But as of right now, the fire is not believed to be suspicious. Emily. All right, Matt, thank you so much. And one of the biggest problems in fighting this fire was Carterville's aging infrastructure. Some of the buildings in this area of downtown more than a century old, and the water system in this part of the city is about 60 years old. News 3's Fauna Haile Selassie is here tonight with more on how that affected efforts to get the fire under control. Fana. Yeah, well, as firefighters were battling the flames over here, they had a whole other situation just one block down. A fire hydrant had blown off and was spilling water everywhere. Fire crews couldn't shut it off without turning off water for the entire city. And officials say it could have happened to any of their downtown hydrants. There's a classic beauty behind these old storefront windows in downtown Carterville, a proud display linking the growing town to its 19th century roots. But behind the beauty are untold aging problems that have no regard for history. Oh, they got a good lesson last night. It was just something we, we did the best we could. Fire Chief Bruce Talley says these century-old buildings with soft bricks and little mortar did not stand a chance against the flames Monday night. A lot of times the, the brick will get hot, we'll hit it with cold water, and immediately there's a spalling effect, and uh, the bricks start to fail or, or wash out, if you will, and then the building becomes weak, becomes a collapse problem then. By noon on Tuesday, City Water Superintendent Michael Rosinski hadn't slept in 30 hours. And the infrastructure in town is 60 plus years old, some of it's older than that. He was putting out fires of his own in the city's aging water infrastructure. 
As fire crews desperately needed water, one of the nearest hydrants came apart. These were the bolts that were holding the base of the hydrant. It began leaking thousands of gallons of water with no way of shutting it off without stopping water to the entire town. Impossible during a firefight. When the fire trucks are hitting the hoses up there and spot shooting water and they move the booms around, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, what it does is it causes a, a pumping sensation in the hydrants and it just lifted it up, the rotten bolts. The issue forced firefighters to continually truck in water from nearby lakes. Rosensky says Carterville will be getting a new pump house, which should help get enough water into town to fight future fires. But he says officials must upgrade the water pipes and hydrants for the safety of the town. Rosinski says Carterville will have its new pump house in about six months. However, he's concerned that if they don't fix some of their water pipes uh, that are already showing signs of problems, a higher pressure system could cause more blowouts. All right, Fana, hopefully they can get that situation under control Absolutely. very quickly. Thanks so much. And it was a very, very long night for firefighters and first responders. They were out here for hours with little food or water, so some of the local businesses decided to pitch in and lend a helping hand. The Pizza and Pasta Express in downtown Carterville helped feed many of the crews around one this morning. The restaurant's only a block away from where the fire started, with more than 50 agencies and about 100 fire personnel in downtown Carterville last night. Owner Frank Charles says his restaurant was packed at one point. I uh, felt like that it was um, just something that we needed to do because we're that's how Carterville rolls. Yeah. We, we take care of each other. Well, I'm sure. Frank came uh, to the rescue and provided pizza for everybody, and uh, it was very much appreciated. That way above and beyond what we normally expect, and he did a great job. Other nearby restaurants chipped in as well. The Carterville McDonald's also gave away food to firefighters early this morning. And this is a very tight-knit community. Many people have told us over the last day what a loss this is for Carterville, but they say they will come together and help get their town back on its feet. Reporting live in Carterville tonight, Emily Finnegan, News 3.